we take a look at some of the most amazing underwater drones and robots. At number 7, the Edge prototype. There are some really talented people working on animatronics for Hollywood movies. The Edge Dolphin is derived from this industry, and the robot can mimic its real-life counterpart to a high degree of accuracy. The goal was to reimagine the educational and entertainment potential of hyper-real creatures to deliver an imitated experience. So this would kind of eliminate the need for actual real dolphins in captivity. Now there is a little bit of skepticism on whether this thing is real or not, no pun intended, but it's just one very advanced remote controlled animatronic system. And there is actually no autonomy going on with this machine. Nevertheless, it would be amazing to see reinforcement learning incorporated into the machine and see what it's actually capable of. That's number six, the Elum. A newer type of underwater vehicle is a highly maneuverable snake-like robot. They can be used for subsea inspection, maintenance, and repair. It is engineered to stay underwater permanently where it can be mobilized 24-7, and thankfully it has not been weaponized as of yet. Sensors and tools can be mounted anywhere along the flexible body, which also includes a dual arm configuration for object manipulation. The robot has already been extensively tested at several underwater oil fields, and it's already been proven to be quite a bit safer than human inspection. That's number 5, the Bionic Fin Wave. Festo always builds incredible robots, and this particular one uses undulating fin movement to move through water. So it's kind of like a cuttlefish. Two fins on the left and right are each fastened to nine small lever arms, and these are driven by two servo motors. The crankshafts provide force to the fins, and this allows it to have a high degree of accuracy. The robot is also apparently autonomous and it's able to communicate and record data to an outside source, but I'm a little bit skeptical on the range of active signal transmission due to high degradation in water. Nevertheless, this water tank in which it swims in is probably just as interesting and that would definitely be a really good product on the market. That's number four, the M2 ROV. So even though this technology is still relatively new for the consumer level, I kind of like this particular drone because it is pretty impressive. This ROV can dive over 100 meters or 300 feet, and it includes a 4K camera along with a grabber claw for getting valuable items off the floor. It is completely omnidirectional, and it can go pretty fast at 3 knots. Early reviews are fairly promising, but it's still relatively expensive at 2700 US dollars. So it's more for professional use. Nevertheless, it's a good step up from previous generation consumer underwater drones. But hopefully we can see more of them on the market and hopefully the high costs go down. That's number three, the Squid Bot. It may not seem much, but this particular robot has a unique propulsion system which generates jets of water. The robot takes in a specific volume of water while storing elastic energy in its skin and flexible ribs. It then releases this energy by compressing its body and generating a jet of water to propel itself. The team clocked the robot speed to roughly a half a mile an hour, so it's not extremely fast, but it is still quite a bit faster than most comparable soft robotics. The team plans to outfit the robot with sensors and equipment so that it can be used for future underwater endeavors. We reach number two and it's the Blue Bot Swarm. One of the latest forms of swarm robotics kind of swims similar to schools of fish. They each have eyeball cameras, which give the robots nearly 360 degree vision. It is constantly searching for the blue LED lighting from its counterparts, which pretty much allows it to swarm and track in groups. Once they are in the proper proximity, they can follow simple algorithms such as search and rescue missions. A signal can then be sent and notify other robots to correctly pinpoint the target. So it's quite a bit more efficient than other types of methods. The team ultimately wants to ditch the LED lighting and go to pattern recognition. But it's still a very impressive stride in the realm of swarm robotics. Now, one notable problem with most of these robots is that most forms of communication including optical, acoustic, and even electromagnetic are pretty much useless underwater which is why you typically see these robots to some sort of tether. So engineers at EPFL have developed an underwater modem called Luma, which utilizes lights. It is sensitive enough to collect data from sources over 50 meters or 150 feet away, but relays can be built in so the system can work at a very long distance. And it can actually work at Wi-Fi speeds, up to 10 megabytes per second. 
The system has been tested several thousand meters below sea level, so it could be a good wireless solution for robotics. Or at least until we come up with quantum wireless internet. That's number one, the Aqua Knot. Transformers are real, and this is a new design which combines submersible and remote operation. So the Aquanaut travels in a streamlined submarine mode for long distance travel, and then it transforms into a manipulation machine with two arms at the worksite. This allows it to perform routine maintenance on wellheads or even turn valves in deep water. The robot can carry out tasks with human operators supervising, but without direct intervention. And because of this, the robot is not tethered, so the team designed an acoustic modem which works at very low bandwidth, but once again, it can use relays for long distance communication. So the operator can still send basic commands, but the Aquanaut maps its 3D surroundings and basically does all its tasks and decision making itself. Ultimately, we will likely see more Aquanaut designs take over human risk factors and replace it with supervision. And to me, I think that's pretty beneficial in very extreme environments. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.